Hey, what's going on everybody? Chris Chavez here with Fandra.com. Today we're going to be giving you our full review, or I guess a very quick overview and review of the brand new Motorola Moto X. Now, many of you know this device because it's been so hyped, uh, even you know before it was officially announced. Uh, people had very, very high expectations for the device. Uh, being the first phone to have Google's very heavy influence in its making, uh, since Google bought Motorola a couple years ago, the merger finally completed last year, and this is the very first phone that we've seen of the new Google Rola. So a lot of people were expecting big things. We're going to give you a very quick, or try to go through it as quickly as possible, all the features of the device and cover everything so that you guys can hopefully make an informed purchase. Without further ado, let's just jump straight into design and build quality. Now you'll notice a very clear departure from Motorola's typical droid line. Uh, the Moto X is something all new, it's a completely different fish and uh, it's just easy to see just right off the bat. I would say it looks more in terms of something like a Nexus device, a uh, small display. Motorola isn't playing the numbers game with the Moto X, so the display stays at a very reasonable 4.7 inches. And they managed to shrink down these bezels uh, a pretty good amount so that the phone is very small in the hand, it fits very nice, and if you're you know, coming from maybe the iPhone or something, this phone will probably be one of the more enticing options as you know, it's not some big behemoth gigantic device. The device is very light. It actually weighs the same weight as the Samsung Galaxy S4. Uh, although it is a little bit thicker, it measures about 5.6 millimeters at its thinnest point, and then it slows up gradually to about 10.4. Not a big deal because the phone still feels great in the hand. It's uh, light. Again, it's light, and uh, you probably won't notice any of the bulk whatsoever. Now, where the phone does have an all-plastic construction, uh, it feels a little more premium in that it's a little more solid along the bottom here and you'll notice this very cool silverish uh, 3D carbon fiber look that uh, it, it looks really really cool and it gives almost like a 3D look and a little more depth to what would normally just be a flat back plastic. Upon closer inspection you'll find uh, a plastic rim around the glass here. On some parts it's just completely uh, smooth, on other parts it kind of raises here and the plastic itself is a very soft soft plastic. Uh, definitely not a Samsung hard plastic. <laughs> if I were to actually push my nail into the plastic here it leaves little small indentions. That's kind of how soft it is and you'll uh, it's probably hard to see it on camera but there are little nicks and scrapes here from me jabbing my USB cable into the port at night in the dark. <laughs> also this is one of the first smartphones ever to be built in the US and uh, that definitely comes at a cost where many you know you could see that as a good thing uh, some things like I guess attention to detail uh, suffer as a result. You can see it's completely flush here but along this side you have a lip so it's not properly aligned and the lip just is prominent all the way throughout this side and when you go back to the other side it's not it's not there it's flush uh, but some parts have little gaps in it so it, it just feels like some dude <laughs> some US worker just you know slapped some glue on here hold it held it together and just kinda hoped for the best and uh, it just it makes the phone feel and look a little a little more cheap than you would expect other than that, I guess it's it's good, handsome, good looks make up for its imperfections. I think it's a very, very handsome, very, very pretty looking smartphone. Uh, and design wise, abs probably one of my favorite looking Android phones to date. Now, one of the main features with the Motorola X or the Moto X is that you can uh, hop onto Motorola's special website. Uh, it's called Moto Maker and you can design your own. It uh, really is a smartphone first. You can change the color of the backing. There's 18 different colors of the back plate here and uh, you can choose between white or black front plates here at the front of the device and then you can even customize the color of the trim here are the buttons and the little uh, trim around the camera there. All in all it's about 504 different color configurations and uh, coming soon there's actually going to be different finishes like a wood, a real wood grain backing and with bunch, tons and tons of different types of woods. Uh, wood 
wood finishes you never knew existed. So you have like a dark cherry wood, bamboo, uh, those sorts of things. Um, no plan or no announced release date as far as those are concerned. And while Moto Maker is cool and it is cool to design your own phone, it is tied down to AT&T at the moment. Uh, it's exclusive to only the AT&T version of the device. You can expect Verizon and T-Mobile and the rest and Sprint to come along or jump on board in the near future. But as of right now, AT&T has kind of locked that into specifically their version of the Moto X. All right, so now let's just cover some of the hardware. On the front of the device, you have a 4.7 inch uh, 720p display. On the back, you have a 10 megapixel, uh, what Motorola calls their clear pixel, uh, 10 megapixel camera. And then on the front, you have a 2 megapixel front facing camera. Uh, the display is actually an AMOLED, so it actually helps a lot with the battery life. Processor wise, we're looking at a dual core processor. Uh, Motorola calls it their 8 or X8 computing system. Now what that means is it's got you know the dedicated processor, the dual core processor, and then Motorola adds in the uh, quad core GPU, which has four cores, so that's six total, and then two separate processors, one for keeping the device in a very low battery saving state, and then the other one for handling, uh, I guess, some of the voice actions and whatnot. So while many devices on the market have full 1080p displays, they're getting bigger and bigger all the time, and quad-core processors, Motorola kind of focused on a mid-range device. And that's not to say the device is by any means slow. Even with the dual-core uh, processor, it's actually 1.7 gigahertz uh, dual-core Snapdragon S4 Pro processor, and you know it can handle just about anything you can throw at it. It's not sluggish or it doesn't feel slow in any single way and uh, the fact that the device is running Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean almost completely stock uh, probably helps along with some of that speed and I hate to say it but in some cases the device performs a little bit more snappy and responsive than the Galaxy S4 with its bloated TouchWiz interface. When it comes to gaming it's packing the exact same Adreno 320 GPU that you can find in uh, some of the more high-end devices like the HTC One and Samsung Galaxy S4 uh, Quad-core GPU, so that means it can handle just about any gaming tasks you throw at it. Uh, maybe even perform a little bit better than some of those other 1080p devices because this, since this is a 720p display, the GPU has to work uh, or doesn't have to work as hard to uh, push out all these pixels to a more higher res display. Now the Moto X also houses a 2,200 milliamp hour battery inside, and that doesn't really sound too beefy compared to, say, like the Droid Max with you know some 3,300 milliamp hour battery or something along those lines. It definitely still performs uh, that 8x or X8 chip that Motorola touts with the extra little processor for keeping the phone uh, very or using very minimal battery while in a sleeping state definitely holds true. Uh, actually, I had this phone shipped to me from one of our other guys at Fandroid, Kevin, and uh, the phone was spent four days in transit, fully powered on, and by the time I received it, it still had about 10% battery life. So that's definitely saying something. Uh, in just normal usage, uh, you get a pretty average maybe around 15 to 20 hours of battery life. Because the phone gets such good standby battery life, uh, it's actually one of my favorite things about the phone. Uh, there was a few times where you know I had like maybe 50% battery and I didn't even bother plugging it in at night. Uh, when you wake up in the morning, you know, you just have that security and confidence that, uh, or peace of mind rather, that the phone is going to sound your alarm in the morning and you don't have to, you know, freak out and find a charger when you, uh, pass out after a long drunken night out with your friends. Now internal storage is a little bit limited. Uh, there's only two configurations. You have either the 16 gigabyte or 32 gigabyte model. And while that might seem like a little cramped or restrictive for many of you, uh, Google actually offers 50 gigabytes of free Google Drive cloud storage with the phone. So it kind of helps out a little bit. Of course, you know, you won't be storing too many, uh, I guess, locally stored or, you know, downloading movies and weird stuff onto here. Um, pretty much you're going to want to do most of your streaming in the cloud. All right, so now that we've covered some of that stuff, we can go into some of the unique features that the Motorola X offers. Uh, the first one being just the camera. It's a 10 megapixel clear pixel camera, and uh, it has this very cool unique gesture. So my phone is completely not off, but it's sleeping, and if I do a little twist gesture, it will open up the camera, and you can tap the screen to fire off shots. The UI isn't quite stock Android, um, and it's really not too fast. I mean, even when I snap off a picture, you can see there's a 
kind of a slight delay. So definitely not the quickest camera we've used, but it's got uh, enough features on here. Nothing too wild. Very, very basic. You have your HDR, flash. Um, you can touch to take a picture, or you can touch to focus, and then take a picture. Uh, just different options as far as that's concerned. GPS and panoramic functions with photosphere and all that fun stuff. And you can actually turn off the gesture, the twist gesture, if for whatever reason you don't like it. But it's kind of neat because, you know, you, your phone could be in your pocket, someone's doing something crazy, you pull it out, give it a good twist, and you're quickly snapping off some pictures. Performance-wise, the camera is definitely one of the phone's <laughs> weakest areas. Now, that sucks because of the cool little twisting gesture, but um, in low light, it takes one of the worst photos you'll ever take on any smartphone ever in brightly you know adequate lighting it's still there's a, some sort of weird over processing with the software um, some type of I guess it's like a noise filter thing that Motorola added on there into the software and you know photos just come out completely smooth and weird so you, you there's some texture on this picture here and if I were to take a picture um, the end result would be some sort of weird nasty smooth I mean if you guys can just Good God, that's why oh, I don't even like to look at it. So um, if you didn't think, you know, the camera on the Nexus 4 could get any worse, I don't know what it is with Google and just releasing phones with horrible camera quality, but uh, the phone, the Moto X definitely takes the cake. It is the new reigning champion of mediocre and average and just horrible. Ironically, the front-facing camera actually takes a pretty mean photo. So there's me and, uh, hey guys, what's going on? <laughs> Uh, the front-facing camera takes very clear, crisp 2-megapixel cameras, absolutely no noise filtering whatsoever, and, uh, you know, it exposes it just right, it has the nice contrast in there, so, I mean, the front-facing camera is really good, it, this makes a really great phone for, I guess, uh, teenage girls who love taking those selfies, and for everyone else, I guess you're just going to have to turn the front-facing camera around and take a picture that way. <laughs> now other features unique to the Moto X are the, um, what they call their active notifications. So if you put your phone into sleep, it's basically like a lock screen on top of the regular Android lock screen. Putting your phone into sleep mode and if you were to get a notification, um, the time will actually pulse and it'll show you the icon of that notification and simply tapping the screen. Let's see if I can get it to turn on here and you guys might be able to see it. All right, so I just sent myself a little email here and you can see, boom, there it goes, it lights up. And it doesn't just stay lit up, it will start kind of breathing a notification uh, to kind of, I, I suppose, to minimize battery life. A little bit better than just say maybe your LED notification light that comes on on other devices. Uh, this one actually shows you, so you can see from a distance exactly, you know, what kind of notification is and if it's something that you need to address. It's pretty cool, and the fact that it's um, only displaying in white and it has a black background, and the AMOLED display actually doesn't use or uses very, very little battery compared to an L LCD display, which even if it's displaying black, will use some battery. So let's see if I can get this sucker to come back on. And um, it's just frustrating because sometimes you want to check it and the notifications off, and you're like, "Come on, come back on." There we go. All right, so. Pressing the little icon here will allow you to either swipe down to unlock or you can swipe up to go to the most recent notification. Uh, and it's pretty, pretty awesome. It's like, it allows you to peek into notifications and see if you want to address it. If you're maybe sitting down on the couch playing some video games and you get a, you know, a notification, you can just tap the screen. Come on. There we go. Tap the screen and quickly read a notification and then that's it. If it's something you want to address, go back to what you're doing, or you can unlock and go straight to that. So it displays about three lines of uh, notifications here, and then three of the more recent ones up on top. And it is pretty cool. I like it when it works. Again, when it's breathing on and off and you want it to come back on, um, that part can get a little frustrating. I also don't like that it feels a little bit hacky, so if I actually go to just unlock, you'll notice the Android lock screen comes on for a split second, and then it jumps into the home screen. Um, Definitely doesn't feel OEM quality. That feels like something maybe, uh, you know, Motorola just kind of tacked on. Uh, it, it, I just don't like it. It doesn't feel very polished. Now, the other big feature that the Motorola X offers that no other smartphone on the market can do right now is uh, quick access to Google Now. So you can see here, oh, Penny, Penny's birthday. She's, she's got a beard. This is Google Now. You guys have probably been are, are accustomed with it if you have a Jelly Bean device. And Google Now allows you to do all these voice actions like, Set alarm for 30 minutes. Setting alarm. Pretty cool. The problem is, is that you have to unlock your device and you know jump into Google now and then press a little, or you can just say Google and then it'll go into voice mode. 
Um, pretty awesome, but the Moto X features this handy way of keeping your device in a very low power state, but you can still speak commands to the phone and activate Google Now for quick searches and doing uh, certain quick functions. Okay, Google Now. How old was Abraham Lincoln when he died? Abraham Lincoln died at the age of 56. So pretty impressive, pretty impressive when it works. Uh, in real world usage, you know, I've been, you know, I've had this phone you know, maybe sitting in on the desk or just somewhere else and I've tried to yell commands into it, but because it uses a very specific tone when you're programming it, uh, touchless control, you train it with launch phrases, so you have to speak a uh, very, um, maybe use different tones while you're doing it. So uh, my natural voice, sometimes I don't say okay Google now the way that I originally trained the device to recognize and uh, it can be a little bit weird and frustrating. Another weird thing is that someone else, uh, if they have an also a very manly voice, uh, they could also just say okay Google now whenever they wanted and um, <laughs> activate okay Google now. So uh, since it's always listening, it can be a little bit frustrating if you know other people know you have the phone and then they can just keep saying okay Google now and searching up all kinds of nasty things from the internet. Now the device isn't too heavy on Motorola bloatware or apps. Again you have Assist and you have some of the Verizon bloatware but overall Motorola has kept it very very light um, offering only a few of their applications and services that you can find on their phones and not from like say a Nexus device. So you do have Motorola device ID which allows you to sign in with your Gmail account and you can jump onto Motorola Connect from your computer and actually access you know call logs and send text messages from your computer. Very cool. There's also an application called Moto Care Tips which acts sort of as like a frequently asked questions application allowing you to search uh, topics about your phone and learn more about it for the noobs I guess. And also Lost Phone Web Portal for finding your phone uh, should you lose it or misplace it somewhere. So final verdict, the Motorola Moto X is a great smartphone. Don't get me wrong, it's uh, probably one of the best in this uh, size segment that you can find. Uh, if you're looking for something a little bit smaller than these crazy uh, phablet devices that have been releasing lately. I think the Motorola X is going to be very enticing to many, but the device isn't perfect. So if you can get over the fact that it has probably one of the worst cameras in existence, uh, the display being overly saturated AMOLED with a crazy contrast and strange gamma, and even the white balance is a little bit strange. It's a very uh, yellow tinge to it. And the fact that build quality leaves you know a little bit to be desired, then I think the Moto X will be a good phone for you. Uh, I don't really feel like this is targeted toward the hardcore Android user that's just looking for you know bleeding edge technology and some insane processor and 13 quadruple megapixels a camera or any of that stuff. This is very much a phone with a mass appeal to it and that's kind of who Motorola is targeting with this device. Simple but useful features that you can't find anywhere else and the personalization aspect that only the Moto X offers and AT&T at the moment. <laughs> and while I don't feel like the Moto X is the right phone for me, I do think many of you out there will love it. I think the phone has a lot of potential and it's unlike a lot of the other phones out there and really in a smartphone world filled with just Me Too devices, the Motorola X manages to stand out on its own even given its uh, quote unquote mid-range spec sheet. And it looks like that's gonna conclude our review of the Motorola Moto X. Be sure to check out the full written review if you're looking for something a little more in depth or if you just prefer reading rather than watching or listening to my voice. With Fandra.com, I'm Chris Chavez. Thank you guys so much for sitting through this uh, and I'll see you next video.